Welcome to Horrible Decisions. Hey guys, welcome. Um, this is your girl Mandy B, aka Full Court Pumps, aka that bitch. Um, and y'all know my other AKAs, man. Y'all, y'all go ahead and call me and fuck with me. You know, no. Bitch, no. what's wrong with you? Listen, I'm actually you very tired. You sound like tired. you have a MySpace so, page right now with the squiggly lines that say AKA BKA. I, you know, <laughs> and that's actually, I think, what I had on my MySpace Who didn't back have in the that day. shit? Um, I got the B, actually, from my name was It's Mandy Bitch after Britney came out with It's Britney Bitch. Girl. I added the B. I dropped the bitch and Where kept the B. Where did the double eyes come from? Because it was cute back then? Hell yeah, bitch. Why you know everybody cute? had the double eyes. I used Hold to on. write with threes as E's. There was threes as E's. There was um, I still V's do hearts as with the V's and the, um, and the three. And the three I think sign. it's cute. It's all right. Oh, we can't start this episode without giving a big congrats to our friend Rory, who's engaged now. Oh, yeah, that's some shit. Yo, I, th- I feel like I'm being left out. Everybody I know. Bitch, Cam- how do you think Maul probably feels? What if you and me had another co-host and both the motherfuckers just got engaged? Oh, they got to get canceled. Like, Alex, I'll fire him. Bitch, what I'm just saying. My bad. My bad. <laughs> we are cutting the shit out. Because you're fucking petty. <laughs> Hey, shit, I'm really not shit. We just started the show. Let's be on nah, it. A happy but I feel way. like that puts mad fucking pressure on the other person. Cause like when one of us is dating somebody, it doesn't really feel like a big deal because it's one person. But imagine if it was two people planning weddings in the room. Yeah, that would be so, well no, Parks is Parks married or well, probably about to get engaged now. He got a girlfriend though. Yeah. Um But yeah, congratulations, so, Rory. Let me tell you how I felt super guilty because um so I went to this party by myself, this roots jam thing in LA, and then Rory you was there by too. Yourself. Rory was by himself. Shut up. Rory was by himself, too. So I'm like, Rory, I'm like, don't leave. And he's like, nah, I think I'm going to head back. Like, Sam's over there. I was like, I don't care, dude. We're on vacation. You're not leaving. I dragged this nigga to, like, four places. They was all closed because you know how L.A. go. Literally making him hang so, like, we could kick it. And then the next day, I was like, yo. At the Rock Nation brunch. Feeling bitch. bad as fuck. Can you imagine if someone had a big day like that? And you just fuck. Oh my god, stay with me. Come out with me. Let's go. I'm not dude, gonna lie to you. Party. So I do wanna say, can can I just start by giving a huge motherfucking shout out to LA? We are sold out VIP. We're Girl. sold out first general admission tickets. There are now less than 30 tickets left for the LA show. And I actually wanna say Wheezy's first response was ugh four o'clock show and i'm just like bitch it is la and that everything closes point. so early i'm so glad we're gonna be able to eat dinner when we're fucking done because everything think... fucking closes early in la bro so, like i'll be honest with you i didn't realize um that it was grammy weekend when i went because i went for uh some other kind of work and so i saved the weekend to kick it so like i go out to a bunch of parties right i went to this bet showcase thing and um then the roots thing and some other stuff and what was crazy mandy is like people recognize me but more people heard me talking and then asked me if I was on the podcast. No, that's like literally people say, I heard your voice and knew it was you. I, it's so weird that it, y'all do that, that, by the way. Crazy? I'm not going to lie. It'll be people that don't that's how, see. That's they how hear we me. first gotten recognized by that girl with her dad they in hear line. us before they see us. And it's, it's so just crazy. crazy. It's so crazy. But that let me know, too. Like, I definitely need to do more like visual stuff, like posting our fucking horrible decisions videos more and like doing things like that because... I can't understand. I was sitting down with, you know, Feezy from Miami. Yeah. Grabbed a bite with him. It was DJ Enough, some other dude who does radio in Cali, and Feezy's piping us up. He's like, yo, I don't know nobody that's selling out auditoriums like this, theaters like this. They going crazy, blah, blah, blah. And this dude hears me talking, and he looks at me, and he's like. He supports us. I don't want to bring up his name again, though. Thanks. Okay. So (laughs) the dude next to him is, like, looking and trying to figure it out, and he was like, y'all are horrible decisions. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, wow. And he's like going through these texts where like people talk about us in group chats. And Definitely. it was just so I think, fun to like. I think we're the, the group chat gods. I ain't even going to hold you. Group we, chat gods? Yes, because dog, everybody be bringing us up in the group chat. We get screenshots in our DMs. We're people, pretty disgusting. I, we get the know, group chat convos lit, bro. I had an Uber where this guy, um, well, the pool, the person in the pool listened to Horrible Decisions. And then we're describing it to the Uber driver. And so the Uber driver's like... God, I just said I ride in the pool. That makes me feel poor. So <laughs> the, Uber, the Uber driver's like, what do you think is the craziest thing you've said on your show? I was like, I don't think it was me. I was like, tell me don't, what you, don't, so wait, don't, wait. don't be saying said, no shit, bro. It ain't me, bro. I said, what do you think is worse? Eating a cream pie out of someone. That's worse. Or I waking ain't up, nasty. going to brunch with one of your friends and still having cum on your neck. This Dried is what up. we don't do, bro. 
Dried you- cum is not worse than eating a fucking cream pie, bro. Bro, what? Get the fuck out of here, bro. Dried nut is easily just a facial. And my nigga, mixed, I for- what would gross you out more if you knew oh, that someone in the car with you ate cum out of a pussy? Who cares? You eat cum. Oh, you bleh, swallow bleh, cum, though. Bleh. To, bro, when I saw that video that Tiana Trump did, I was disgusted. <laughs> I couldn't even watch it. As soon as it started coming out the pussy hole, I had to stop the video, bro. Why? That shit was nasty as fuck, bro. Was it real? I don't know, but I was disgusted. I was like, <clears throat> am I wildin' for feeling like this is not that crazy? Yes, bitch, you are. What I do find crazy is your motherfucking ass keep bro, thinking you got, I got a rash. A, I, I did, bitch, I was like, what the fuck? I, I did wear a necklace. Which so is bitch, worse, Benson? What's worse? Be like, <laughs> and, and then it started That's flaking. Like <laughs> <laughs> so basically, mine was cleaner than yours. Get the fuck out of here. You can sit here and believe that. Okay, so um, I do want to catch up about one thing. Uh, I have become obsessed with the idea of having a real role play scene with scissors mm-hmm. because I've been watching so much love after lockup. <laughs> Everybody's been telling me now that I'm done with 90 Day Fiance to watch love after lockup. First of all, Tyomi was on there in a, qui- in a clip. Because what? this virgin, oh bitch, hold on, let me tell you the story. <laughs> they got this black girl who's a virgin that lives in Texas, who's talking to an inmate who's in Michigan. She's never had sex before, so she finds Tyomi. They're doing like a Skype conference, and Tyomi's like teaching her how to like ride and have sex for the first time. It was really cute. So she's like picking out her wedding dress and getting all excited. She's like, you know, I know he has a baby mama, but I'm not worried about her. Bam. Camera then goes to a new scene where you see this white woman who's talking about how she's 24 years old and engaged to her fiancé, who is said man in prison. Both of these women at the same time are picking out wedding dresses, bruh. Both of them at the same time. This nigga is literally, they got the camera going, hey, boo, hey, boo, love you, love you, talking to both of them. Then the bitch who's the virgin. The producers ain't shit for that. I'm just going to tell you that. I would spaz. The producers, all y'all getting shot. I'm getting all my niggas. Y'all really gonna make me look like a fool? Y'all knew this up? This nigga had another bitch then getting the dress? Her daddy, the nah, black bro. girl, right? And you already know I'm team black girl. So he's like, yo, there could be two or three women when you get there. She's like, he not lying to me. So then the she gets- The producers are not shit for she that. She gets to the airport, right? And all I keep thinking of is, how is the camera, how is everyone letting it get this far? Bro, I was glued to the TV. <laughs> so then he calls. He's like, babe- don't come. She's like, what you talking about? I'm checking in for my flight. And he's like, I'm trying to get some things together. I'm trying to make it special for you. Bitch. What, he finna make a jail burrito The baby her? mama picks him up. They go in the car. He tells her to go do something. He uses his homeboy phone, FaceTime, and using producers' phones, bitch. Talking about, you know I ain't got no phone. That's why I ain't call you. I'm thinking about you, bae. Niggas is trash. But here is a, what, you bitch. Oh, all right. Guys, just tell me. <laughs> so, you're so annoying. I'm sorry. Everybody wanted to tell me I was doing something wrong. Um, nah, but then they had a really good one where they got this black woman. She's 41. She's been in jail for 10 years. She's talking to this old white man named Steve. Steve been tricking the fuck off, bitch. He gave her like 100 G's while she was in jail. All you the- know why this isn't much fun? Do none of these people have accents? Otherwise, I don't care to get a. Re- but no, the story's really the- good. So then she, okay. he goes to pick her up from the jail, right? Uh huh. And then he gets there, and she can't get out because all the money he was sending, she was using to do fucking math. So then they do season two. They're back. The bitch is there, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, I just don't know if I'm attracted to Steve. He's been talking to her for three years. Wasn't fucking nobody else giving her a hundred G's. She's like, so I don't think I'm gonna have sex with him. I need to clean him up first. So she gets this, these scissors and she's ready to cut his hair. She's like, you know, I was in cosmetology school. They kicked me out because I was too high on meth, but I took a few classes and starts trying to like revamp his this look. Gotta be scripted, bro. No, bro. It's just lit. You know, broke people have the best love. Nah, this gotta be like they just do. You gotta be like them type of people that they used to get on Jerry Springer. And Jerry Springer was not real. Don't tell me shit's not real, man. I'm, I'm real. You know how many bro, hours Jerry Springer I've was not this? real, dog. You don't know how many hours I invested in this. Well, I'll I tell paid you now, $37 on a flight to have Jerry high speed Springer internet wasn't to stream real. This. I don't know if Ricky Lake was real. The only one that might have been real. And Jenny I Jones. Jenny Jones definitely wasn't real, bruh. I'm gonna say the only one was Maury, bitch. Bro. Maury was real. You had to get a real DNA swab, bitch. The only thing I don't believe about Maury was the decoys that they used to set in their room. Oh, rooms. my God. I don't believe that shit, bro. No, I'm not going to front. all fucked around with the decoys? I would no. love to be a decoy. Bro, get the fuck out of here, bro. So, that shit was the only part so that I think. you don't really love her again. <laughs> nah. Yo, but the decoys be making out with them niggas. Y'all, that's what I'm saying. No way, bro. I would do it. 
Duh. I would love to come out. Duh. And be we the know decoy. you. You like to have sex for research, and so we know, like, ma'am. Um, <laughs> Shanquella, I was back there with um Taquantis, and I tried to let him know, like you know. I'm only going to do this if you single. And he told me he was single. So that's why I did it. You mad? Yeah, that's what you're going to do? Yeah, like I would love to just be a part of that. Oh, what a great job. Yeah, that you would be, be a, a good fucking job. How Springer much do you think they got paid? $5. Probably as much. No, I was about to say that. No, I think they got paid as much as NBA cheerleaders. <laughs> like forty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Them hoes get fifty dollars a game. You know, I met a cheerleader at the airport that was a bartender too, and I was like, "But what, I don't get it. You're on the TV." Yeah, they make fifty dollars a game. <laughs> what the? No, what do you mean? They make fifty dollars per game. Why? I think the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders make the most, and I think they make a hundred or a hundred and fifty per game. Don't they gotta practice? Yes, and they don't get paid to practice either. They they gotta like go and do appearances and shit. Fuck out of here. I swear to God, that's why a lot of them work at Hooters. Like, yeah, bro. Maybe it's. Yeah, they get Maybe popular. it's like us. We got to do a pot. You got to start somewhere. We podcasted for free, put our money and our manpower in this, and now we getting paid. Yeah, well, that's like, you know, they hope to land one of them ball players on the court. So it's like when you. <laughs> that's that's really what they do. It's it like for. fucking for free. You hope it's a good end game. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> hello. Hello. What about you? What'd you do this weekend? Um, so I'm in busy season. I'm super busy, um, with work. Um, me and 24 seven got into a really big argument. So I don't know how, if he's going to be president in 2019 any Why? further, we got into just a, a really bad argument and he caught a little snappy ass attitude with me. So I caught one in motherfucker person? the back. Nope. Argued on the phone and pretty much was like, we deaded each other. Like, cause you, <laughs> mind you, I think it was a little bit of an ego thing. Like, he pretty much was like, man, I'm tight as fuck. I just hit you right now because I've literally missed his last five to six hit-ups. Like, either by being asleep, being at work, like, not being available. But you've so been busy. I've been really busy. And I, I, he's just, like, used to me, like, waking up. Like, I I make myself available for him very often. But it's literally gone, like, for you two weeks. Somebody else? Um, No, I haven't been fucking anybody else. But that day we argued. Bitch, I said, well, fuck you. And so I hit up another nigga real quick and was hoping he was available. Bitch, I took a train to Philly to get dick. That's how much I was not going to make him upset me. So I took a train to Philly, <laughs> got some dick, and bitch got on the train the next morning and went into work. How long does it take to get to Philly? From from my job, an hour and ten minutes. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's going to Brooklyn. So, right, bitch. So that's I was like, and it was really, 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 really good sex. It was well worth it. We fucked really nasty. He like came all over my face and I washed it all off. Thank you very much. Um, and it was just it was just really good. I gave him a massage. I think I am one hundred percent now in the foot game because I massaged his foot. It started at the ankle though. Did you put it in your mouth? No, I didn't put his foot in my mouth. But I like massaged his whole foot, like the 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 heel, the little. I mean, I've massaged feet, but not like in a before sex scene. Like. Uh, well, so no, we had already fucked, and then you know he was like like my ankle hurts like could you rub my ankle and i was like yeah so i rubbed his ankle then i turned it into a foot massage then his hamstrings hurt and bitch he shouldn't have let me rub the hamstrings bitch. so the hamstrings i made him lay Why on was his, his body hurting so much did he play no don't worry about what games? he do for a living bitch god damn ho <laughs> my anyway my ankle, any, bitch. Any that hoobie. sounds like a sports injury <laughs> to me anyways his hamstring hurt or whatever so you know i started giving him a massage and i was like damn and he said my massaging was good um, I I like a good so massage it was cool. before sex. I oh I had some sex too. So Beard Bay was um in L A for the Grammys, and we had sex. And let me tell you what's crazy. We get along so well, to an energy where I I don't really like how friendly we can be, but we just mm-hmm. get along that well. Right. Seeing him, I get very relaxed, and we talk, and we and immediately when we see each other, we're always talking about like other lovers, right? Like oh, let me tell you about this and what's going on right. with this. The That's second, how me and twenty four seven are. But the second we have sex, bro. Literally, he got inside of my pussy, and it felt like my pussy was a fucking glove that was, like, perfectly fit. It was oh my crazy. God. I did not want to come, like, too hard because I didn't want to, like, pipe him up that much. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, it was so fucking good. And honestly, what was even more exciting about it was the fact that, like, Scissors was just so dope, like, the whole time. Like, I had this little bit of a fear. Like, I, I know she knows. What, what is Scissors? I call her my girl, but I also, like, don't like labels. Like, I don't know if she's an important person to me. People, like, some people were saying that other people don't mean anything because I only post her, but, like, she's just the only one that I feel 
is needs to be posted. I don't know. Right. She's like the most consistent person in my life. And honestly, with the men that I date, I feel that um, for some reason I want it to be a little more private. Maybe because she hasn't been in my life so long, I don't care. Like, for example, if I started dating my ex, the Latin dude, I'd probably post him. Right. Because I posted, posted him, him before. before. But anyone that's new, I feel like they don't that's, need to be. That's where I'm at. And, and I would especially like that with to be the private. show. And as much as I think we are very transparent with our listeners. Um, I feel like the ones who don't really ride for us can say very cruel things or even they say things jokingly. And I don't know how my partners would take those things. Um, so like I said, even when I posted Jordan, like all of the comments under that shit and how fast it went, I, just I was just like, like no. no one's like, I love sharing stories with everyone, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's that necessary to share photos and, like, details of that person's life. Right. Um, for example, like, I used to wonder a lot with Jeeves, like, what would happen after a while. Like, I, it would always feel like we were about to post each other. And then I would just be like, listen, I don't want to bring you into something that I can never get you out of. And I don't know how far or how deep it can go. Right. Like, for... For people to post other people's Instagrams on, you know, blogs or whatever it be and share it between each other, that's something you can't get back. That's something you can Google. So if I have to live through that shit, I don't want you to have to. I even told Scissors, right. like, are you sure? Is this okay? Like, I won't tag her, but it's still her face. Right. Which is a big this deal. Is, oh, so I guess I, I will share one more thing that happened, and it really made me think Oddly, and I want to know maybe if any of you women have been through this. So um, as you guys know, like I live in my apartment now by my by myself. So I had all this furniture delivery um, over the weekend. And not only that, I needed a handyman. So, bitch, I paid someone from handy to come and take furniture apart and dispose of furniture. The best. Then I had two people come to deliver my furniture. Then I had someone to come and pick up my my entire living room set in the span of like four hours four to five hours there were five strange men that came into my house so I literally hit up Felon Bay like where are you like I just need your presence because I genuinely did not feel safe and it was stupid I, I guess it's not stupid to feel that way but literally no, it scared me that I was going to be in this house five strange men were coming and I genuinely felt like I needed someone to protect me did you listen to my episode with Interho Uprising no I didn't I talked about Stuff that I haven't talked about this podcast with, like, someone recognized me, right, as I was putting the key into my door. I mean, you know where I live. Right. Um, and how I've felt like my safety has been a big deal. And maybe it's because I live alone. And I said that one of the people I've called when I don't feel safe, have no romantic relationship with him, is Wax. Like, oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, I'm in the I I'm in the Bronx, so like, I, there's not many people that I can think of that are close outside of Christopher honestly, who does our, and our like, audio oh, and stuff. Right, Christopher, is Christopher close. but I I hit up Felon Bay because he's but walking Alex distance, lives in but Queens, that's it, right? Alex lives in Queens, and Alex is so busy with Andrew. Sometimes I've called Alex; he don't answer, and like immediately when I'm freaking out, I, I, it's it's a weird default. I'd be like, I, I just immediately call Wax. I don't know why. I just feel like he can kill someone. You for need me. more friends, bro. Nah, like, niggas, niggas. <laughs> Who is, like, ruthless? I feel like I mean, wax was. it wasn't even that I felt. I guess I just felt like I just needed another male's presence to wean off whatever, you know. Even the guy that came and picked up my I'm sofa hit me and was like, you're so beautiful. Oh, my God, we should be friends that's after. Just, that's, and so it was just very uncomfortable. Like, There's something I want to tell everyone about who's listening that lives in New York. I started to feel so unsafe, like, in that same way. There's this place called Shaka, um, and it's on 2nd and 7th. It's free self-defense, black guy who teaches it. Um, it's on Sundays from 3 to 4, and you could do Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7, free women's self-defense. I'm telling you, Mandy, when I took that class. Nah, I'm just going to get weapons and place them around my house. I have it too, like weapons in my house, but that at least, you know, to fight someone off, like, because once someone's in there, like a handy dude, right, how fast can you grab them? Honestly, I will be very honest with you. Self-defense classes are cool. However, in my mind, I feel like I'm going to turn, like 300 is one of those movies that makes me feel like I could be anybody. And I literally feel like I'm going to turn into a Spartan in my mind. However, when I was sexually assaulted on the train, I froze. 
I could have beat the fuck out that nigga. But because of what was happening, it, there was such shock that it happened that I literally couldn't. I, I didn't know that, what I to think do. That, that moment that you had was a big shock because you were in a public place. Place, but I feel like if someone, no, nah, I'm still gonna like, and I'm. I literally know, which is why I think I date giants because in my mind, I feel like I might feel like I could beat a nigga up who's under five nine. But in real <laughs> life, I know that I can't beat no nigga, bruh. But you can at least disarm someone or like hit them enough to where you can run. And that's the main point, I think, of self defense is to at least just hit them so that you can go and get out and be okay. Like the things that I learned in that hour and a half, like even like places on nose and like just little pinpoints to just make someone fall down for a second so you can go. Child, that's I ain't important. gonna believe. I ain't gonna remember that shit in no case that's, of fear. That shit could save your life one day. So I wouldn't say that you wouldn't remember it. You never know. Like, an hour and a half is nothing for free out of your day to learn something that could... Bitch, we live in New York. Mm, you know? Yes. And you live in the Bronx, bitch. I feel safer in my shit than I do coming to your shit. Fuck out of here! You live by bars. Mad bars with drunk people. Bro. I live by Indians who mind their own business and because the niggas really... And no, in real life, all my, all my neighbors are bang, from Bangladesh. When I tell you them hoes don't scare me, they be wearing their little shit from church. They all go to church they wear all the their time. Little shit from I don't church. know what they shit called. You what, what's it called? Oh well, Catholic shit. That's what they wear too. I'm sure they're very underrated. I don't know, but they listen. Whatever Catholics wear, that's what they be wearing. You did not pick up. They what look I just real said friendly. The women don't speak at all to us because yeah. I know they know I'm a hoe. Underrated. How safe it is? You think? You think it's underrated? Let's. We're not gonna <laughs> do that. Listen, that that she 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 Bitch. was hurt. I was listening. She was um, hurt. So, for no, those, she was so, so whenever so we don't do, um, when we, we're not able to make it to episodes together, um, I listen to them while everyone else listens to them because I like to like live tweet it. Because even when we record an episode and people will mention something we said, I'm like, what was that? Yeah, so, Especially because we pre-record so much. I don't remember. Right. So I like shit. to listen in the moment. The second I heard, I think Beyonce's overrated. I'm like, first of all, bitch, she was talking about sex positions. You Dog, ain't about to come she, for the queen. But not only that, then the renig killed her, me. Her whole definition of overrated was wrong and then someone it was wrong as fuck someone in the background was trying to cap for her like oh i never thought of it that way and you're like because you don't need to think of it that way because it's not right <laughs> because, <laughs> bitch, I, I was like <laughs> <laughs> overrated means you're just really good so we rate you hot no, no. <laughs> bitch you knew when, when i tell you i was like but no i don't think that's right <laughs> that was awful oh, we need to check webster <laughs> i was rolling so Today's vanilla shit uh, got sent to me by Christopher. Um, it's an Orlando Weekly um, article. It's really not about sex, but I was just in shock. Headline is, George Zimmerman is on the dating app Bumble, and he wants to grab coffee and cake pops. My nigga, he I really do like them cake pops, though, is bro. really on this fucking app. George shirtless? The fuck Zimmer Zimmerman. Yep, shirtless. Pictures with him with his dog. And then here's his bio. Jury consultant at self-employed. Let's get coffee and cake pops. I'm looking for a mature and fun woman that's ready to be loved and respected the way she deserves and is able to reciprocate. Conservative Christian views. Bitch. So did you happen, did you pick a kink of the week already? I did. Darn, because this actually goes with one that's... Um, find it. Um, I'm looking for it right now. I cannot believe this nigga really has the nerve to live his life. And I don't want to say that I hope someone does something to him. But I do hope that someone that's looking for him finds him on Bumble. I will say that much. And grabs coffee and cake pops and pop show motherfucking ass. I know that's right. Can you fucking believe it? Like, just find love somewhere else. Why don't you go on TrumpDating.com, which I saw on Jesus and Mara when they were on Viceland. TrumpDating.com is where you can go find other racist people, and maybe you guys can build a wall around each other and live happily ever after. I cannot believe you're just out here. But you know what's even crazier? It's in Florida. So there's other fucking but, dog, people that probably are like, oh, I love you for what you do. One hundred percent. That's fucking gross. And I, so I want to look at, um, basically, damn, y'all know I want to get y'all the name for it. Um, what is the kink? So the kink is actually, so there is a kink of people who are aroused by knowing that their partners killed someone or did something that is against the law. Oh. Um, there's an actual paraphilia for it and I can't find the name. I mean, damn, but it's, it's literally 
where if you think about it, probably these women or men this who is like go love after people, lockup, people, bro. That, right, which Come is on, why team, we I didn't went, even know. No, bitch, because you ain't sent me the outline till I was sitting in front of the goddamn mic. I could have didn't had this shit. Okay, bitch. So you sent me the shit eleven minutes before seven. So what you trying to say? Our show was in an hour. I said you well ahead of time. It doesn't matter. But no, so there's actually a kink where there are people who become aroused with knowing that, and and it might be something with the bad guy vibe. Like you know how we always feel like the no one wants a good guy. Yeah. How we like the bad guy theme. The <laughs> hell you with the drug dealers and scammers and shit. I was shit. gonna say I can hear you a little day, bit. You know what I mean? But I you mean, used to love them having guns. What if they <laughs> kill somebody with that shit? Man? Cause I ain't gonna lie, I think it's sexy when Omari Hart would be on power, just bop, bopping niggas and that. You know what I mean? Speaking of him, he what? It's not him, but someone that looks like him is on Raya, and I was like, yo, Mandy got to get on this shit. Yeah, but he got to be five and just taller than fucking Omari Hart. It wasn't Omari. Omari's married. It don't matter. The nigga but. on Raya still got to be five <laughs> inches taller than that Isn't nigga. Selling Bay like five ten. Listen, I still. <laughs> Calm down. So let's not. He's five. He's five eleven, six foot. Okay, all right, bitch. Give him another two inches. Cool, but yeah, like, let's there's not a act huge like you difference don't fuck between six feet. You smiling like you got a name in your mind, and I'm trying to think. I might got two in my whole life, bitch. Girl, please. Mouth the name. Mouth the name. Mouth the name. <laughs> Who you talking about? Sorry, Who you funny. talking about? Who? <laughs> you know what's so funny? I just thought about this guy. You fucked that you probably forgot. I that. You remember Bama? Why? And you fucked him at the studio. This is what we're doing. Yo, you this know what, what I didn't realize? This is what we're doing. These niggas took us to this club. This is what we're doing. They used to be a church, Club Destiny. Do you remember that? I really actually don't want to bring them up. But because why did, is that why they called it Club Destiny? Yeah, but it's <laughs> one of those things that makes me go back and realize we were dealing with pedophiles. So I'd rather not think of. But bitch, you still fuck with niggas that fucked with you when you was. They were not. I don't fuck with any of the old niggas that was fucking me when I was 16, 17. No, I don't. Not I one mean, person. The point is. Not one person. I just don't really know. How dumb were we? We went to this club, and then we went back to a studio where these niggas lived. Do you remember that? They lived they at did. the studio. I'm trying to think. How did that not go into my mind? As you know what? I just want to say real quick. Shame on us for being 16 on stage with Boosie saying, wipe me down. We <laughs> used to get into the club, be the youngest, baddest bitches in the club. In the club. Look. Remember when we went to the studio with Gorilla Zone? We was in the studio with Gorilla Zone shit. Bitch! Bitch, we got beat steady, drop. That was so funny. Middle of the club, the whole thing. That was such a fucking scam. We should not have been, yeah. The only person I really wanted to fuck back then was Young Jeezy. It never happened or anything, but like that would have been like goals. Yeah, but that, no, that would have (laughs) been statutory. I feel like I would fuck Gucci and Keisha. (laughs) That would have been statutory. I would fuck them today. Who? Gucci Mane and Keisha Dior. Kaor? Dior? Let me right? think. You They're know so what? Fun. More than them, I think I would want to fuck Lauren London and Nipsey. Oh, oh bitch, bitch! I know Nipsey that shit'll be good. Yo, Nipsey got BDE like a bitch. Dog, when he was in that parking lot, he was on lot, my flight. He was slippers, my nigga. He was on my flight coming back from was um, he cute in person? from L. He, so he was on my flight coming back from L. A. from All Star Weekend. Bitch, when I tell you, I was like, oh, this is who was he was like the last person. He was about to lose his motherfucking seat. By the way, nigga came up. Late as fuck to the gate. So he could, I was like, God damn, he is fine. And she as fine shit. too. Shit. But I feel like she looks boring. She doesn't look like she would be great in bed, but he looked like he would be nasty. Yeah, he does. He looks like he's like, he spanks too hard. And then like. He looked like he choked, bitch. <laughs> and he'll spit in your mouth. Pass he looked out nasty. Like, no, 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 it's all right. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> he look- I'm still alive. I love me some nipsy, Um, bitch. I saw some people in person that were really good looking at these parties that I went to. One, Georgia Smith. I see why Drake was obsessed. Okay, yeah. She's Holy she's pretty on online. Shit, bro. I double tap. And she's, the second she's pretty one, online. Rita Ora. Those are beautiful women that already. Yeah, but like there's other pretty girls that like I think may be disappointing in person, but like goddamn. Are man. there any guys that you've seen in person that were like way better looking in person than online? Ooh. Damn. I got one. Oh. I got one. Bitch. Oh. When I Real quick, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta break it down, and not to be disrespectful because he is married. Fuck it, but he. Oh, had, now you're not being disrespectful. I know, man. bitch. I, I know, <laughs> bitch. I really don't care because I'll take him and his wife. But who? The biggest dick energy from a celebrity I have ever met, and I said this on live over the weekend, bitch. Swizz Beats. Really? Oh my god, he got an aura and I a swag and a confidence. Like, bitch, I know that dick come down to his ankle, bitch. <laughs> 
When I tell you, and then he ba- he fixed me a drink. I ended up meeting him at like a VH1 Honors event when they did the VH1 Honors here in in New York, mm-hmm. and it was like I don't what was it for the music or some shit like that. But it he was has him. a nice voice, bitch. But he was like, "You want a drink? If you don't get your big dick away from me, talking about and you fixing drinks, so he's a gentleman. Drink what, bitch? Just a drink, <laughs> right, bitch? I drank it, swallow all that shit. God, I'm really. He had the think. biggest dick energy of any celebrity I've ever met. The one of the best looking couples I've ever seen was uh well they're not together anymore but Common and Angela Rye. Oh yeah, you did say you. That was like black that. couple goals, bitch. Yeah, I would take. I'll take both. Oh my of god! Them speaking too. of um just black people that are dope. <laughs> On my flight back to New York, I saw Don Lennon. I saw your, your tweet. So I was spazzing, right? And so I'm like, all right, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. So I was, like, leaving the flight, and I was, like, staring at him. And I know he could feel it, and I couldn't talk because I was so excited. So I just raised my hand in this fucking fist, and he laughed mad hard. Bro, you play so <laughs> fucking much. I'm trying to think who I – oh, my God, bitch. You know who was really funny looking in person? I'm just going to let you know. They could I've tell, seen they could, they, they could tell you made this outline today, bitch. Why? Because all over the place? Because we, talk, we just talking. But it's going to be fun. Bitch, first of all, my outline's been good. Talking. Fucking like animals, porn categories. My shit might be all over the place, bitch, but it's a goddamn good time. Okay? Well, we got Just 20, like my sex. Is it? Okay, go oh, ahead. Oh, so I'm, um, a Wiz Khalifa, actually real cute with a skinny ass. Oh, no. I like skinny niggas like I him, I'm going to lie to you. Um, no, you know who's really funny looking? So, like, I've seen Neo a few times in Orlando. But I went to Poppy and saw him with his girl. No, not at all. He's just really nice. She is. I so mean, I think Neo looks like how he looks. I don't think his girl is anything to look at. Like, I just feel like if I was like rich and I like just could focus on being rich, like that I wouldn't have a wiggy looking wig. And I was just so shocked. Like, if I'm that famous and I'm gonna be taking pictures, I mean, shit, I'll be giving a fuck now and. People take pictures of us every day. What? Yeah. What y'all talking about? Y'all talking about me? No, name our, our guest is here. Fucking whore. So anyway, today's episode is about drugs and the effect it has on sex. Um, I really wanted to do this because Mandy told a funny story to me once about how when she ate a weed brownie, she was super fucked up. Oh, and I've had oh some my like, god, the gummy bear really. Oh, did it. someone. That's how it started. Someone on Twitter was like, "Yo, I'm in Amsterdam and I'm, I feel too high," and like it reminds me of the story Weezy told. So. I narrowed it down to a few different drugs that people use during sex, and I also asked our Instagram followers for some advice on it, too, um, and to, for their, to share some of their stories. So the first drug we're going to talk about today is poppers. You guys have probably heard about <coughs> us talk about poppers. When yep, we have, I we used have, it one time. Yeah, when we have gay men on the show. I know Vinny uses it often. If you ever want to use it in the store, you have to ask for a leather cleaner, um, but it's basically an aroma that you sniff, that gives you like a head rush. Um, their brand names could be Liquid Gold or Rush. Um, they're often called nitrates. It's um, it's a really weird feeling. It comes in this little like glass bottle. If you ever go to a gay club, they're all like passing it around on the floor. But basically, they can make you feel horny. But the main purpose <coughs> of poppers is to lower the inhibitions and make your orgasm feel stronger. They relax the sphincter muscle, which is why it's commonly used among gay men. So it's either to be fucked or fisted. Um, but they can cause a man to lose a heart on too. So it's better to be mm. the one who's taking it if you're using the poppers. Yeah, so I used it, um, and I should have known, goddamn, he was gay for having poppers, but the gay porn star that I fucked, and I found out he was a porn star after. <laughs> <coughs> he actually had me sniffing this shit, and I was scared because this was our first time having sex, and he's like, smell this, and I, I'm thinking I'm finna That was your out. first time? Ha- yes! My only time, my first and only time using poppers was with him. Oh, um, shit. And I did. I'm not going to lie. You said he, he fucked brought, the shit out of me. You, you had said he, that fuck, he brought, like, shit to your house. Like He fucked the goddamn shit out of me. He's probably Oh, if, well, he has sugar mamas. I mean, sugar if mamas, had a whole so yeah. kit, bitch, he you has like, sugar he brought, mamas. He has sugar mamas. You said he brought different shit to your house. He has sugar mamas. Okay. We talked about it. He a whole ho, bitch. He a whole ho. Well, at least he, he gave you the whole experience for and free. And he fucked me That's what I'm trying to get free. from King Noir. Got his own. Uh, yeah, <laughs> baby. About that. Um, that nigga charge, charge. All right. Well, what? let's not say I mean, the price. We'll, I mean, we'll get the discount. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the cons um, of poppers, there's a bigger risk of anal bleeding. Basically, it expands your blood vessels, so that's a possibility. And it does make... Your immune sister, a, um, immune system, a little bit weaker for a short amount of time. Um, now let's get into real drugs. Want to get into some harder shit? Yes. All right. Well, let's talk about MDMA. 
So MDMA what is that? MDMA is a substance found in Mali. Um, it makes Ooh. people feel highly asec- affectionate and sentimental. It gives an empathetic and connected feeling. But when it comes to physical pleasure, people have said, women mainly have said it felt amazing, and mm-hmm. a lot of men have said they can't get it up. But people seem to have this great experience during sex with MDMA, but rarely are able to orgasm. Bitch, I had great sex on Molly in Orlando. So yeah, like it's- you remember, I left the club and we went and had sex in the car. Who was it? Who was it? Ju- oh, the only thing I was fucking bitch. I can't. Re- oh my god, Mandy, you were so high. Do you remember that time we did it I on the so cruise? High. You did it on the cruise. I refused to do it. I just drank the liquor that we snuck in the shampoo bottles that we didn't get all the shampoo out of. Bro, I did that fucking Molly on the cruise <laughs> and started crying, and that's when I realized I had to leave my nigga. Because it was just us and, like, five <laughs> girls. And I was like, yo, he's not a it good was, person. It was. Bitch, I'd be crying like a motherfucker on Molly. See, I so I haven't time. done Molly in years. I haven't years. done Molly in years either. Um, only because I, I know it. that, like, the chemical. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that was the last time I did Molly when the I was selling it. The chemical makeup of it, though. Like, so basically what Molly does, you guys, from what I know and from how I've used it, I used to, like, love to rave back in the day. Still do love to go to music festivals, but Molly just... It boosts up your serotonin, which is the thing in your brain. It makes you happy, right? It makes you feel good. Much like when you take a Lexapro or a Zoloft. It gives you serotonin, but it's, it, it slightly increases it. So mm-hmm. when you get that much at one time, that large rush, what do you end up with? A huge fucking come down. So literally, I'd feel super happy, and the next day I'd want to kill myself, and it just lasted too long, and so I wasn't in the mood for it. But if you ever want to do Molly... I can recommend some vitamins to take. Um, 5-HTP. When me and Vinny would go raving, we was definitely the motherfuckers that had vitamins on a campsite, bitch. So vitamin C helps you get higher. If you feel like you're coming down, drink some orange juice or uh, 5-HTP. But I wouldn't really recommend Molly because I think it's really a hard drug to... uh, You are such a drug expert. Jesus. I don't do it anymore, but I can definitely... Well, I don't want to take anything that could, like... Keep talking because you sound like a professional. Here's the thing, right? (laughs) In those days when I was partying and doing Molly, I have to make sure that, like, I'm taking care of my body. Right. So I was a very, like, get high and responsible bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, oh, no, no, no. We got to know. How long is the high going to last? I'd be on the Internet checking. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, it's a very hard drug to use. I think back when I – I mean, what was that? That cruise was almost 10 years ago. That was. So, yeah, like, we were now, 20. It's – Cause we were definitely under 21. That's why we had to sneak There's all the liquor There's some testing on. kits, though. You can, like, dip it in the molly. But it seems like when people do drugs, they never plan it, which I don't think is a smart thing to do. Um, that's why I don't remember it. But here's the interesting thing I've read from some people. Someone wrote us a Twitter DM said, I remember feeling really into it, but not amazing physically. I felt like I was so connected and super close to my boyfriend. Like, we were in our own universe, but... I don't know if it felt as physically good as it did in my head. She sounded like she was high right in that bed. What? She was what late, you too. Say, girl? <laughs> I don't know what it matters, but she was late. All right, go she ahead. Like, What's the next one you got? You got something connected? else? So the next one I want to talk about is uh, what most of us do. It's legal in some parts of the country and world. Marijuana. I, I Before we get on the marijuana, I'll tell you one thing I don't like doing while being high. Weed makes my mouth very dry. It Me also too. makes my mouth have a weed taste and my partner have a weed taste. So the kissing is like, bitch, I taste the backwoods and everything. Ugh. Or oh, the you be smoking blunt, blunt. Oh, yeah, my nigga smoke, smoke. I, I don't like so that. So I, 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 I get that taste. And then because my mouth is so dry, giving head is just like, ugh. And just like with giving morning head, like I taste my breath and smell like the yeah, weed yeah, yeah, on the yeah, dick yeah, yeah. and it's just not enjoyable but there, go ahead there's a feeling that it's that, that cotton mouth side effect of weed i really don't enjoy me neither. one thing i really don't like doing is consuming weed i don't like oh that. that's the edibles yeah bitch so I, I shared my stories of the edibles um my whole body paralyzes i feel my heartbeat it's crazy i would say when it comes to the edibles I will not take those in public. So for anyone listening, <laughs> if you plan to take edibles, take them so in the confines of your own home or someone you trust home because they will be able to do whatever they want with you and you can't stop it because your arms don't move. Your heart is beating they, fast. They, huh? Oh, yeah, because I've been... <laughs> you right. They, bitch. <laughs> or, or that one particular person. Mm. Plur- singular, bitch. <laughs> I can't. Singular. I don't like plural. eating weed because my body feels too, like, weedy. 
you, I can't see. Why do you be coming up with, so you want to talk about me with words, weighty? Where did I get that weighty. word from? Because you have said that shit before, like you really believe that's a word. I know it's I not. I become weighty, you mean light? No, like heavy. <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm high talking about this. So like every time I consume marijuana, I always feel like everything weighs a lot. Like my hands are real heavy to move through air. I get real dumb. Yo, shit be laced. Do you no. know what's the best <laughs> weed I've ever had? She though? She likes the her shit, don't she? The best weed? No, this is just me eating. Am I? It's oh, from this white edibles? people. This is edibles. Yeah, edibles. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, yeah. So the oh best, yeah, that's why I said I can't move, bitch. I told you I feel weighty. That no, that's not a word. You feel heavy. <laughs> You feel paralyzed. That's what I say. Paralyzed. The best high I've had in years that I remember from marijuana was the day that I went to the women's march, walked into the studio, and we were with Imani. And oh, yeah. the reason I remember how great that high was because Dallas Penn talked about fucking that shoe. And I was like, my nigga, am I hot? Or is this really, <laughs> is this really happening? happening? <laughs> um, so I just want to read you guys a few things about weed. Um, side effects, good side effects, are higher libido. And more orgasm. Studies have found that many people have higher libidos and better sex while stoned. Apparently, because weed kind of slows everything down and it has this effect on the brain, um, the receptors that associate or that are associated with sexual pleasure decrease anxiety, make sex enjoyable because the orgasms last longer. Everything feels like it's taking longer. Um, bad side effects that people have gotten. The number one that I'm reading is that women get less wet after smoking not everybody experiences that um but that they say that's the most common side effect in women um one of the other that ones, was a, you said it increases or decreases libido. it increases libido but it makes a lot of women have trouble with um yeah getting wet for some reason okay cotton so pussy oh that, that could possibly be with maybe males so i i looked it up real quick because i've heard of marijuana um affecting fertility and I'm actually reading here, it says, before intercourse takes place, marijuana decreases libido. And if you aren't feeling in the mood, it's that much more difficult to get started. Um, but marijuana is something that um, an occasional users has reduced fertility. I actually wow, I'm reading mine from Very Well Health. Very Well, that's verywellmind.com. Bitch, that's the same shit. So you just don't know how to read. No, 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 no. no. I was reading an article um, full on about drugs and sex, not just weed. Oh, so this so is... maybe it's another so, study. Yeah, so this is just weed. Also... Bitch, ain't that a damn shame? Some people get horny, some people despite don't. The some people come on Molly. Despite some... the relaxation effects, which you did mention, um, research has shown that marijuana has negative effects on the male sexual response. Marijuana has been found to increase imp impotence. Impotence. Impotence is when you can't Pot get hard. Potent. Oh, I thought it was potent, like... Your sperm was potent. Oh, that's what it is, yeah. Okay. As well as interfering with <laughs> you like, and your partner potent. being able to have sex, impotence can also have negative effects on the male ego. Um, mm. And so, yeah, and then it's just pretty much um, saying that if you are preparing for parenthood, it would be smart for both of you um, to decrease the intake of marijuana um, because you risk increasing the chances of infertility as a couple. But honestly, the impotence thing, like, that happens with... Molly, they say for men, alcohol, cocaine. It's, oh, it's it, any it, kind of... Which is crazy that a lot of men talk about henny dick and mm -hmm. all of these things. When you're smoking weed, when you're doing Molly, when you're doing X, when you're doing smoking weed, all of these things actually can affect your performance in bed. So, yes, if you drink it and... A lot of them, I will say for, for most of my partners, when they're in a state of being not sober and have any type of substance in their body... They don't come or they take forever to come. Bro, I hate it. And I hate it. I fucking I've, I've hate I've it. I've actually got something pulled up with alcohol, too. About that, that yeah. So talk about we talk about alcohol, though, um, I want to bring up one more kind of drug, hallucinogens. Um, That's white people shit. White people take hallucinogens? Oh, bitch. A lot of black people wrote me stories on Twitter about it. Um, what, uh, what, shrooms, what are, LSD. Oh, shrooms. I so, do be dealing with them creatives. The creative niggas love shrooms. They cheat. Bitch, think about shrooms Travis Scott. Huh? I feel like it's Psychedelics it's got me going crazy. Nah. Rolling, rolling, I rolling. took mushrooms one time and didn't feel shit. Bitch, Uji. You really, every Man, time you... I swear to... You, no, them you edibles, too much. bitch, did my ass in. Um, so, okay, uh, acid, a.k.a. Okay. LSD. It's a tab you put on your tongue, it melts. Um, and it's basically a way that we all... People will say how things become cosmic and very euphoric and you see colors mix and it can alter the way that your visuals are, right? Um, there's actually shit if you Google... 
Um, Dubs always used to talk about how she loved acid. And, like, she would pull up these visuals um, that were with, like, colors intertwining and, like, different, like, funnels and stuff. And it would feel like it was coming out of the screen and shit. Um, So this is a DM we got on Twitter. I'm a polyamorous, kinky woman, kinky woman. The first time I had sex with my boyfriend of two years, we had both taken LSD. He loves biting, so foreplay was the most intense session I've ever experienced. When his teeth pierced into my skin, I saw stars and fireworks. I gave him every inch of my body in a moment, in that moment verbally. He has been fixing and abusing my beautiful my beautifully ever since i don't know what she meant another time he was beating me literally he punched me off the side of the bed well this is not wait she said bdsm which brought me back from an intense trip and then we i came and we had another fantastic night of sex there was another time mixed with lsd coke mdma bourbon 12 condoms later we work up sex and drugs are wonderful and she's black as fuck sex and drugs are not wonderful Um, but okay (laughs) there's another person I said, my first time doing acid, I'm a teacher, please keep this private. My first time doing acid, I got it from a student, realized that I was so deep and and, uh, intuitive within myself. I called him over. He brought over another classmate that I hadn't met. We all had a wonderful experience. This better be a college teacher, ho. I'm just going to say that right now. She better be a university professor. Okay. It don't say nothing on the bio, bitch. Bitch, I, I was about to tell you. Go look at the bio and see where she teaches. I can't. I need to know. On, she better on. be a professor. It just says Brooklyn, New York. You think there's colleges in Brooklyn that she might be There in? is. Okay. And bitch, she better. <laughs> better be a one of them goddamn cunies, ho. Better be one of them cunies. <laughs> um, Brooklyn College. She wrote, please keep me private like 10 times. So then that whole fucking high school. There's was. one more that I've never heard of. I'm going to look her up. It's called Sensei. Real quick, her name. Her name in there? Mandy. I just want to know, bitch. I got to know. You fucking That's... classmates that are not only giving you drugs, <laughs> they're bringing in other classmates for you to fuck? Bitch. I'm sorry. Hey, listen up. I'm going to look you up. <laughs> Stop. And if it's, a, if it's a high school, I'm telling. I'll delete it. Don't worry. I don't want Mandy to tell you. No, I'm oh, telling. Oh, a high school, I guess we if got If she's to. a high schooler, I'm telling, bro. That's some bullshit. That's why I would never be a teacher in high school, because some of them niggas. That's probably why she wrote that shit to my DM. Yeah. So... <laughs> Sensate focus. I've never heard of this ever. This is my first time reading this, but it came up once I started researching uh, LSD and hallucinogens with sex. It's getting high on feelings. The good news is that you do not need to withstand the risk of drugs to receive this benefit. These effects can appear with sensate focus. Much like Molly, you can pay careful attention to sex with someone you genuinely appreciate. After committing yourselves to regular sessions of slow, sensual touch and detailed communication, you can feel as emotionally connected as you might on MDMA, uh, maybe a weed or an acid. But people that practice this do a lot of tantric breathing, a lot of breath play, a lot of like learning your bodies. And they say it comes with very, very slow and long sex. So um, I, I think I've definitely done that shit, bro. Slow and long Cause like that don't sound like none of the sex I have. I want to kind of like smoke weed before I do this, but I feel like I could definitely try, like get high off some feelings, like fuck like you're on a molly but you're not. Because here's the thing, right? And that's what I think made me stop doing it when I was younger. Like as much fun as I would have on it, I was like, bro, I've had this much fun before regular, right? Like I, I, I have. I'm an extroverted person. I have this energy. I don't really yeah. need it. So. If I can get myself there and peak myself to that kind of high to where people will ask me if I'm on drugs, I could do that shit in sex, bitch. Yeah, I mean, I do that now. I feel like I enjoy sex. Like, and not only that, I talk to my partner so much about sex before we have it. They know I'm nasty sober. So I love talking I don't about really sex need during it sex, as, sex, too. I, I, and I think I will say when I was younger, I did used to use maybe the, the concept of drugs and alcohol as an excuse for me being nasty. Just so that they thought that I was this nasty just because I was under the influence. And also, alcohol brings away a lot of the shame. So Yeah, that's why I did the the edibles. Yeah. I didn't want to think about shit. A lot of people, we shame ourselves for the sex we have, and we have to fucking... I've had so many, like, oh, let me have another glass of wine before I, like, I, you know, do this. Um, So alcohol and sex. The science behind whiskey penis and how drinking alcohol determines whether or not you get an erection. So basically... They're saying that it's a popular belief that alcohol is an aphrodisiac, but all it really does is inhibit your inhibitions. Right. But it also loses the ability to um, attain an erection during orgasm. Some people can overcome anxieties 
but there is a bad physiological effect on the penis. Um, it's the common cause of erectile dysfunction. The amount of alcohol in the blood increases, and it decreases the brain's ability to sense sexual stimulation. I will say that um, something else that I've noticed as well is that as a as a woman, I don't get as wet when I'm really drunk, and I'm noticing that now more just trying to, like, I thought my pussy was broke, but I've, like, definitely been noticing that when I am under the influence, specifically alcohol, because I'm an alcoholic, but... I noticed that I don't become as wet. I don't know. If I I've become more irritable it. with with the condom. Like I dry out quicker, of course, because I have I, I like condom dick. Um, but that's kind of what happens. I've noticed, like my body, I don't get as wet. I mean, maybe that's why. So alcohol is a depressant. Yeah. And maybe that's why it said with weed, maybe certain strains of weed can make you not be wet because it might take you down a little bit too. I much. believe that. Um. So the depressant, right? Um. It's basically saying that. It you kind of lose your response to circulation and the sensitivity to nerve endings. Um, That's the, why I be slurring my words. Yeah, it causes the blood vas- vessels to dilate, which influences the way blood moves in and out of the penis and clitoris. So women can maybe not feel as excited either. It might take you a long time to reach orgasm. Um, and the last and final drug, I think I t- said alcohol was the last, but it's not. I wanted to talk about enhancement drugs and just tell you how they work for men or women. So basically, we known them for boosting libido, but what it really does is increase blood flow to the genitals. So we always hear about Viagra because we do need more of a blood flow in the male penis for heterosex. But with women, though, when taking pills that are supposed to be like I've, I've seen little ones of like Seven Eleven with like a kangaroo on them and like different mm-hmm. shit, and they always have different kind of vitamins in them. But the pills that women have that you see have vitamins in them like macaroo and like different shit to increase libido and blood flow to the clit or the vagina. Um, now, whereas it's not a direct effect on how pleasurable sex can be, if there is more blood flow going on down there, we're like super sensitive, which is why you maybe get stronger orgasms from your clit or you can have multiple. There's just one more thing I wanted to read that came up to yeah. alcohol with a listener letter. The Someone wrote this in. Okay, this is our home mail? Listener mm-hmm. letter? And cool. it was called uh, Vomit Dick. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I did see this in the email. I love this one. (laughs) Hey, ladies, I love your show. Y'all crack me up, and you've helped me expand my sex life with my partner. I've had the same partner for two and a half years, so nothing is off limits with us, and we play around a lot. When we discovered I can literally fit his whole dick down my throat, lit for not having tonsils, we got carried away. I love when he gets rough and shoves his dick down my throat and fucks my face when I'm on my knees. Well... One time it happened to me on a full stomach with many tequila shots and three margaritas. So I'm pretty drunk. And in the middle of him fucking my face, full on deep throat, puke comes out. He pulled out quick. I swallowed the puke. That's the worst feeling ever. Took a drink of water. And he continued until he came. I think our comfortability with one another plays a huge part. But yep, I puked on a dick and it didn't faze either one of us. Love y'all. Tati. Bitch, you're disgusting. No kick shaving, but goddamn. That's Bitch, nasty. you swallowed it? Not only that, I'll tell you, that should be hot as fuck. Like, throw up to swallow it back down your esophagus. Maybe it was like, hot for them, like on some ghetto gagger nah, that shit. that should be motherfucking burning. Ain't, but I'm in ghetto disgusting. gaggers, whenever I watch porn where people have thrown up, like, they, they, always, they, take, they spit out, right? Yeah. They throw up. Throw up on Maybe the they, she didn't want to do it because she got good sheets or something. Bitch, that, yeah, that's why I like hotel sex. I, bitch. Everything go, bitch. I completely understand. I, I did this interview with Shan Booty while I was in L.A., and one of the things I was saying to her was like, yo, I'm staying in a hotel right now, and like, I totally get why people fuck nasty. I want to do Like, everything. I see how I people get peed fun. on in hotels. That's the only place I've done it. Where else are you going to do it? Like, because you're not doing it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I'm not. I, Put the I, towels I, down, no, Mike. No, in real life, I, don't, I love squirting. I'm not squirting on my sheets. I just clean these bitches. I don't blame you, ho. And, bitch, I live in the Bronx. I got to go drop my sheets off, get them washed. It's $15 for my for my comfort. That's expensive. Now it's an expense. $15 for your comfort. For my Oh, to my wash dad. To wash, bitch. $15. I ain't trying to do that, bitch. Bro, New York. Then I got to walk. <laughs> shit That's with a lot, shit. <laughs> the prices we pay for laundry, my nigga. It's disgusting. But can I just say, I was in L.A. for, what, five days too goddamn long? The city is gorgeous. The weather is great. I would never want to move out there. I said that. I did that shit. shit. All Star Weekend. I'm cool. It's so different. Like, oh my god, I went to. Wait, we have a show in LA. Can we? Like, that's not. I said, like, the people are boring as fuck. Can you not do that? I do say that. Well, I just said we sold. We done (laughs) sold. We selling out of LA. 
the people are boring. But it's fuck. not the people that listen to us, but the rest <laughs> of them niggas is fucking trash. Shout out to all the friends I have in LA. But outside of them, I didn't I wasn't it's, fucking with it, my nigga. Like I was telling Van, I was like, bro, I don't know how you love this shit, dog. Takes so long and to get. Van is from Baton Rouge. I'm like, hey, you love this place? Yeah, no. How? Louis- Louisiana got mad real niggas. And mm. like, no one in LA is from there. No one. They're I all think- ex- what are they? exports, imports, in- in- expats. expats. Boom. Ooh, come on, words. Yes. Overrated. Hey. They didn't know she'd get a Webster. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, no, like I was in the club and I, I was telling Maul, I was like, are you out here? I like needed some New York energy. Bitch, I'm in the club, right? Austin took me. We went to some Duce party that they, they threw and he was like, I'll take you to Poppy. So we go and they literally kick every girl out of VIP except for me, Neo's girlfriend and one other girl. 50 niggas, just to make room for more niggas, to yeah, be no. around other famous niggas. I don't niggas. like that. That shit is mad bad. groupy niggas. Like, but why not New York is that way now too. Like, it, like niggas... Girl, because they really all fucking each other after the club, but we're not going to get into that. I don't know. I mean, I haven't had those experiences hey, baby, in New York. It's all. But I was very disappointed that nobody danced in the club in L.A. Like, Duh, because they all just pretty in there. Like, why Why are we here? Bitch, Going Bad came on, and I put my jacket down and was like, oh, I'm about to get ready, ho. <laughs> she said, are you ready? And nobody. I was the only I was person. Like I'm like, have they got this song out before me? <laughs> Did every, is everyone tired of this shit? Why am I wilding for dancing? Well, you were also out of town. Like, you get more lit when you're on vacation. Bro, bitch. you don't dance when you're in a club. It I don't depends. care where I am, bro. I'm gonna have a good time. If I made that, if I took the energy to get out of the house and put something nice on to go somewhere, I want to fucking live my life and have a good time and dance. I didn't come here to fucking stare at other people and be a bitch. Facts. Well, you know? I do want to say thank you guys. Oh, we're going to um, Atlanta this weekend. Yeah, so, Speaking of dancing, y'all fun yeah. as fuck in Atlanta. Is this is this dropping? Yeah. Next? Oh, okay. So I'm excited for the Atlanta show. We sold out. I'm not gonna lie. This is probably oversold. I ain't even gonna hold you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. No, it's, we're oversold. Shout like, out to AJ and Toya. They're gonna be closing the, on their house in Atlanta, and I'm like, well, they gotta come. They're my one of some of my best friends. Yeah. So like, how is everyone gonna fit? I don't know. I, I ain't even gonna hold you. People gonna be standing up because we got too many people. Fire hazard. It's we, cool. We ain't leave enough seats. This what we could do. We can I'm make happy, our friends like, look like staff. Lie. I'm happy. I'm happy. No, I got enough like real staff that I know, they're not like, even gonna have seats right now. Well, they could be on the side of the stage, dog. No, this is what I'm saying. So I do want to say I'm excited as fuck that but, we sold out Atlanta. We did, y'all know, as um March 9th, New York is sold out. We damn near selling out March 10th. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, please get them because that shit about to be sold out. So, bitch, we selling out, ho. Bro, I don't even want to hold you, bitch. I can't Selling believe out. LA is fucking so old out in a day and a half. Yeah. That's crazy. A day and a half. We and this is um Hollywood improv. So if y'all have been Bitch, to, I'm Hollywood improv. What the fuck you talking about? You a go. day and a half, nigga? Bitch. I went to parties that didn't have that many people no. in them. So bitch. Eh, eh. I can't wait to uh, meet the LA Horror Hive. But uh speaking of yeah, Atlanta this weekend, I don't know if we're gonna get to go back to that club. That was so much fun, but like I couldn't breathe in there. So if you guys know of a ghetto hood fun club that doesn't feel and taste like blunts. Let me know. Because maybe it doesn't exist. Know. Yeah, I don't know. Lay Jardin is cool, but that's like an outdoor club. Bro, do you remember how I was wheezing and using my inhaler in the club? In Atlanta. And the, oh, the fact yeah. that it was an appearance and we had to be there. Yeah. I was in tears. Medina was outside like, it's okay, Wheezy. They saw you. They know you're here. <laughs> and you were texting me like, there's girls from London here. You got to come yeah. back. I can't do it, dog. Well, I'm going to be clubbing all goddamn weekend in Atlanta. So I'm it's ready. It's going to be a fun time. We're excited uh, to see y'all. Yeah. Um, Thank you I can't guys. wait to hug um, you and kiss you on the cheek and touch your titties. Yes, it's lit. So, once again, this has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Enjoy this episode, uh, this next clip, I'm sorry, from our Patreon. If you don't have it, it's five bucks. You can have access to a slew of episodes on there. Enjoy us. We have some really fun shit. Bye. Bye. Yeah, ho!